Today you're gonna learn the golden rule of the first world chess champion Steinitz that allows you to defeat the majority of your opponents rating below 2000. Now let's have a look at this position, it is white to move. The position is actually from the world chess championship match between Steinitz playing white against Chigori. Again, it's white to move and you may think about this yourself and after that let's discuss it together. Initially the position seems to be very complicated with a whole lot of options that white can choose from. Like, maybe white needs to do something against this threat of pawn a4, targeting this bishop, maybe the pawn can even run further and attack the white's king also together with the queen, so maybe white wants to do something about that. Or maybe white wants to counterattack somehow, to jump forward with this knight here or here, trying to create threats against this king. Or maybe white wants to stack heavy pieces along the h-file and attack here. Or maybe just move his own king to safety to b1 or to strike in the center somehow. So there, there's a bunch of options really, and it seems to be really complicated to pick the right one. However, Steinitz followed his own theory and proved that this position is easily winning by white if you just know the right way of thinking. So here's his theory. First off, you win a game of chess by attacking, and therefore you gotta look for attacking moves first and foremost. Okay, number two is how do you attack? You gotta find weaknesses in your opponent's position and, ideally speaking, the weakest point of your opponent's position and target that greatest weakness. Now, what are weaknesses? Usually these are pawns or squares in your opponent's position which are not defended by another pawn. For example, this pawn on e5 is not defended by any pawn from d6 or f6 and it is weak. White is putting pressure and if white we can somehow get rid of this bishop, knight takes e5 would be a real issue for black. So this pawn on e5 is an example of weakness. Compare this to the pawn on g6 which is defended by another pawn. That is not a weakness and it is really difficult for white to attack this pawn anyhow. Now, another weakness in this position is this pawn on h7 which is on a semi-open file and white can indeed try to attack it somehow. So those are the two major weaknesses of black, and of course, the juicy pawn on h7 would be our main target, because then we could just checkmate our opponent. Okay, now with that in mind, we'll think, okay, can we attack this pawn on h7 right away? What if you go knight g5 and attack it that way, and double up? Like, well, that doesn't work, because black can just trade it off. Can you just sack the rook over there? Well, black recaptures, and there's not much we can do after that, so that doesn't work. Okay, then Steinitz thought to himself, if I can't attack this pawn right away, can I attack the other one on e5 somehow? And he came up with the move pawn to d4, which he actually played in the game. Now, this is a pretty strong move, attacking this pawn, maybe even threatening d5 and with a fork of the queen and the knight. Therefore, Blake Rick, black captured, white recaptured, and black took by the bishop. It turns out that taken by the knight is actually not an option for black, because if they play that move, that would lose to a brilliant... Rook takes h7, which is not that hard to find if you're focused on that weakness. And after king takes, queen to h1 actually is almost a checkmate, because we're delivering check over here, and our bishop takes away the square g8. So black can delay it for one move, but that is checkmate anyway. In the game, black figured it out and played bishop takes d4, white recaptured by the rook, and black took with the knight. He probably expected white to capture with the bishop with this check, but black could cover with the rook and the game goes on. But instead, Steinitz still delivered the same blow, rook takes h7, because he was focused on fighting and attacking that weakest support in his opponent's position. And after king takes and queen h1, it's actually something relatively similar to what we have seen before. Our bishop takes away this square, therefore king g7 is forced, but now bishop to h6, check to the king, it went forward, now queen h4, white is just continuing this royal hunt, and after king to e5 and queen takes d4, black just resigned because it was probably too painful for him to allow this pawn check made in a world chess championship match. At this point you may be wondering, okay Igor, I gotta attack, that's pretty obvious, but how do I know that it's the right time to attack? How do I attack, right? There are still a bunch of questions. And Steinitz actually came up with a comprehensive theory that gives you answers to all of these questions. And all the top players in the world know this theory really well. So let's have a look into it. So the first rule of Steinitz is that the original position, the starting position of a chess game is equal. Which means that if both sides keep playing proper moves, it's gonna be a draw at the end, the position will remain equal. However, luckily for you, your opponent will play wrong moves. And, you know, on the level below 2000, they're gonna play a lot of front moves. Now, when that happens, when your pawn plays a move which is either like an obvious error or even just an inaccuracy, such as the move pawn to d6, because it blocks the bishop and he does not develop a piece straight away, such as the move knight to c6, that actually makes your position superior. 
And when that happens, when you notice that your opponent played an incorrect move or even an like slightly incorrect move, that signals that you gotta seize this opportunity and start attacking right away. Stani said that you gotta attack, you can attack and you should attack, because if not, your opponent will, you know, regroup, consolidate his position and you'll miss this chance. So use it or lose it. Now, once again, let's say we develop and your opponent goes h6. Now, in the opening, we know that we gotta develop our minor pieces. So if you notice that your opponent plays something out of that, right, does not develop a piece, that's again triggers your thinking, okay, I gotta attack. Now, how do you attack? Well, that is also explained, right? As we discussed earlier, you gotta find the weakest spot in your opponent's position. And in this position, such as in many other opening positions, the weakest spot is that pawn on f7, because it's only guarded by the king, and therefore, that's the doorway to your opponent's monarch. And with that in mind, you can actually start looking for ways to attack this pawn. In the current position, you can even sack the bishop right there, dragging the king out, and after that, you continue this crushing attack against the king. Since the knight is pinned, you can't capture or else the queen will be lost, and if the king tries to hide back, you then finish it off with queen h5, and after that, you continue this royal hunt within a couple moves, and you finish the game in something like this. In this game, Steinitz was playing white, it's a game from a simul, he was given rook odds, therefore there is no rook here on a1. Black's last move was pawn to g5, which is clearly wrong, weakens the black's position, as well as does not develop a piece. That signaled to Steinitz that it's time for white to attack, so he jumped forward with knight to d5, hitting the queen. The queen went back, knight to f6, white keeps attacking, king goes to g7. Now I played knight to g5, trying to open up the position, and after this, we reached the critical point where I think it's quite remarkable to see how Steinitz finished it off. Because I'm pretty sure that most players would probably just recapture by the bishop. And although white of course saves the good attack, but it's not that easy for white to win from there, because if we continue the line, I mean the position remains to be fairly complicated. And yeah, white can take it, king goes back, something like this may occur, but let's not forget that white is playing without that rook, and therefore black is still having decent material and the position again, although waiting for white remains to be complex. But white said to himself, hey, I'm Steinitz, I gotta follow Steinitz's theory. And he asked himself, what is the weakest square in my opponent's position that I'd really love to attack? And that is the square f7, right? In the close proximity to the king. Then he asked himself, okay, how do I attack this square? And he found the move queen h5. And that's a really brilliant move. That actually threatens queen takes f7, checkmate in 1. And if that queen is captured, here comes knight to g8. The square is no longer defended by the rook because the rook was distracted and it is checked to the king. The only square to go to would be king to e8. And white finally got to that weak square with the checkmate. Of course, in order to actually implement this new way of thinking in your games, you need to practice. And in this video, I explain how to study chess properly and efficiently, so that even if you only have 30 minutes a day per chess, you can still make sure that you spend this time in an optimal way and your chess results keep increasing gradually. Check it out, and I'll talk to you soon.